Welcome everybody to episode one of this Let's Play series of Legend of Keepers, which is a dungeon management game where you are the monsters defending against the heroes. In our episode zero, which if you didn't catch, uh, make sure you check that out in the playlist. Um, episode zero, we talked about the game, the talent trees, the missions, the monsters, the traps, the spells, all that really fun stuff. And we set up our very first dungeon so I could kind of show how stuff works. It's kind of a lot to explain it's kind of a lot to take in if you haven't actually played but in this first dungeon everything should probably click into place fairly well once you see it going so in that first episode we set up our first group of monsters our first trap uh we didn't we don't pick a spell until we actually start the dungeon but we'll pick when we get to it second trap second group of monsters and then if they make it through there they fight lyra our master who is a monkey engineer so all of her minions are sort of engineer themes. They've got like mechs and different tools and stuff like that. And then this random fire elemental guy. So we're going to hit, hit confirm. And there she's got all of her bombs and stuff. So we're ready to go. First group of heroes comes in. This skill shuffles everybody around, which we prepared for. Her passive does some damage to a monster at the beginning. The lowest ice resistance, so she kind of targets the one that'll take the most damage, which kind of hurts. So now here we have our first character uh, is turned to go because this mechanic character is faster than all of these other characters. So we can either use our wrench throw, and the nice thing is this will actually highlight the monster it's going to hit, which is right here. I'm sorry, I keep saying monster. That's a hero. Um, oh yeah, let's see. So their morale... Yeah, I didn't talk about this. Um, I couldn't really show it yet. But as their morale gets lower, they'll actually uh, perform worse. So you can see right now they're unwavering. They just take regular damage. But as they lose morale, um, they get weaker in combat. They'll take more damage, which is pretty cool. And But they, they get a little bit of it back when they finish off a monster. But it's not that much, so it's not a huge deal. So we can either hit with our wrench throw, and it highlights the novice in the front. We can just do some physical damage, and this character will gain some barrier points. This guy's weak to that, so that would be good. Or converter. All monsters of the group gain 25% of the mechanic's power as barrier points. So I think we'll go ahead and just do a smack here. Throw, throw a wrench at that guy. So they're, they're all going. This is normal. This looks alarming, but it's not. I... The monsters get kind of the crap kicked out of them in most fights here. So we have this character here who can either do overheat, lose 20% of its maximum life to apply self-protection to the monsters of the group. They gain 10% of maximum life as barrier points per turn. Interesting. They don't have a lot of turns ahead of them, it looks like, though. Or flamethrower. Area of effect, deal fire damage, apply burn. This person is weak to fire, resistant, very resistant. So I think we'll just do this one because we're kind of running out of... I don't have time for barriers to go up. We just got to do some burning. <laughs> this poor guy. So now this person took some damage as ice damage from the frostbite effect from this one. Um, unfortunately, they're... <laughs> They were very low from their other attacks that they received, so this ice attack hit all the monsters in the group, which was really unfortunate, so they're all taking that damage. Now, these enemies now have burn on them, so they're going to take some damage as fire damage every turn, which isn't very effective on these two, but what else can I do? Can't choose my minions in this early part of the game. I only have the six, and I needed all six of them. So we can either do explosive head, morale damage, and physical damage, and applies demoralized. And that'll be for the area. That could be very useful. You can see it sh hovers and shows a little bit what it's going to do. You can see their, their life and morale changing when I hover it, which is very helpful. Or helmet cannon. Hit the one in the back for 32 physical damage and minus 32 morale. Attacks an additional time if the target's morale is under 75%, which it is not. Um, I don't know for sure if that means after the effects of this attack or at the beginning of the effects of this attack. We can actually find out next turn if this character is still alive. I think we'll do the explosive head, though. Disgusting. Our monsters are getting destroyed. Yep. <laughs> Goodness. 
And we really don't have any choice other than to continue flamethrowering them. So this group of monsters got completely wrecked. But that's because this character doesn't excel in that. They excel in traps. Oh. That character just ran away. So here's where our master is going to cast a spell. I love the design of her. She looks completely deadly. That's awesome. So we can either use the physical damage and buff our next group of minions, the chemical cloud for poison damage, or the targeting drone to make our next trap do extra damage. That's going to be great because this next trap is a crossbow that hits all of them and it's going to just devastate them. So let's use this. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Our passive goes off. His passive will go off. It didn't go off. The first fight only. So I misread that. This isn't the start of each fight. This is only the first fight. So I did misposition for this, unfortunately. But it may not matter. We might be able to kill. Yeah, this will kill the person in the front. This will not kill anyway. So I think we use this one. Better to finish her off so she can't hit us. Make some fire damage. Persecution, area of effect, fire. And defeated. So they didn't make it to the master. And that's really good. So we killed Hero, so we obtained blood. We didn't scare anybody away, and we got some gold. And then we get to um, grab a monster here. So do we want a Psycho Imps? Oh, they're like Christmas themed. Gross and weird. So these are psycho imps. They're all of the same sort of uh, like racial group or whatever this is for monsters. They're like the demons and the um, elementals and stuff. Actually, I don't know why this ghost isn't undead. Strange. Anyway, psycho imps have an area of effect physical damage that applies bleeding and a morale attack on the one in the front that can ricochet if their morale is low enough. Very cool. They have 50 health, which is bad. Uh, lots of motivation, though. They're okay in speed. They do kind of a lot of damage. Ghost. Apply morale debuff. Air damage in the back and a morale damage over time. Standard. Helpful. Gargoyle. Area of effect air damage and morale. And front air damage and bleed. So honestly, I have no idea. These all actually seem kind of fun. I think we'll go with the Psycho Imps because that's ridiculous and I've never seen this before. So we're going to go with Psycho Imps because why not? So motivation. So you can see these two lost two motivation because they um, were defeated in that fight. My second group of uh, monsters did not get defeated so they won't lose any motivation. So you can see here... Um, and I and I and I did miss misspeak in the first one. I said that it doesn't matter which group they're in when they go in. That's not 100% true. You can put more than three monsters in a room, and then when you go to set up that room in the dungeon against the adventures, you can pick which ones you want to be in there from the group. So I could actually load a group up like this and then not use certain ones. If they're not in the garrison, they won't get their morale, their motivation back though. So you can't bring them in the group, take them in, and then not place them. You do have to leave them in the garrison to get their uh, their rest. So what we want to do is set this up for our next go-around um, with the monsters, but we do want to wait because we don't know if we're going to acquire new stuff before the next group of monster uh, heroes show up. And I'm probably going to keep doing that and accidentally flipping when I say heroes and monsters, so I apologize for that. So we have our next week, and I've went ahead and selected the trap because I really want to um, upgrade our traps here, which are really cool. So we can upgrade our ballista to deal double damage and apply the same debuff. This is probably going to be extremely brutal in combination with this. This doesn't really do much for me here. Extra 20 morale does not really matter, I gotta say. So 
this is really the big ticket here. This is going to carry me in the early game uh, with this 40 damage, but it'll be times two. So it's really going to be 80 damage to all heroes with this Ballista up, uh, upgraded here with these two traps in combination. So we'll do that. We'll pay for that. We could upgrade more than one if we wanted to, but I do need to save a little bit of gold here. If you can see, I would spend all of it, and that's that's dangerous to be too low on that. So we go on to the next week. I could do an event, or I could buy a monster or a trap. Um, I think at this point, work out the master at the gym. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'll show you what that is. So let's do a merchant. Circular saw does some damage and applies bleeding. That's okay, but I like how the ballista does a lot of flat damage and can be modified by that other trap that I have, so I think we'll skip this. Steel Golem does ice damage, frostbite, does nature damage, removes all effects applied on the target. All monsters of the group gain 10 barrier points for each effect removed. Okay, so it kind of cleanses them of stuff and then buffs my units. Now, does this um, remove negative effects? It may. I don't know, but I might want to buy this creature. This is cool. And then we've got a Naga. Front, air damage and morale, or back, ice damage and lots of morale. Uh, does extra damage if there's only one hero left. That's pretty cool. I like the idea of this golem, though. I want to play with these new construct-type units. I can also refresh the monsters that are available, but I don't want to do that right now. I think I'll just buy this one. I could buy another one if I want to, but again, I'm going to save a little bit of gold. I'm not in any sort of rush. Workout is really cool. Oh, inadequate resources. So I won't have enough. That's nice that it warns me. I won't have enough of whatever it is I need. And it could be any combination of these things to do a workout. So we'll do an event. Deal with office troubles and the business work environment for better or worse. New talent. A headhunter is here to show you a promising monster he has spotted on the job market. You see, I would definitely recruit this if I had the funds. That's unfortunate, but yeah, money in the early game is a little bit difficult, so we'll reject that. So now we have another group of heroes coming into the dungeon, so we want to set up our rooms. So I think I want my area of effect person in the opening, because then there's more likely to be three people to hit. This person can't afford to lose two motivations, so this person has to stay back, because if they lose all their motivation, then they, <laughs> they, they run off for a while. It's not good. This character will gain three motivation. Ah, okay. They lose two per defeat and gain three per rest. So actually they rest pretty quickly. And let's see, who do I want in the front? Got three and three. This person's very tanky. This person could be good in the first group. This person's kind of low health, so it might be good but they do area of effect. So let's put them in the front and we'll take these people out and then we'll use um, this one to tank in the front and we'll have these two doing tons of area of effect damage. And then we'll leave uh, one of these home to gain some morale. No reason not to. I mean, that's not true. The reason to take them would be so that we have more choices, but early I'd rather have them healed up in case of a disaster and everybody runs out of morale at once. So let's leave our uh, fire person behind, who was a little bit disappointing, to be honest. Uh, plus, this person would be better in the first group because they have a AoE. So that looks okay to me. So we've got our monsters set up, so now we can go in and fight our next group of adventurers here. This dungeon is organized differently. First, we have a trap. Then we have monsters, and then another trap, and then a spell. So it's not going to work the same way for us this time. We can't just technician buff the trap ballista it won't work that way because the spell is after both traps so i'm still probably going to do gnome technician here and then ballista here it just won't be as effective so with the spell we'll probably end up using the one that buffs the next group of monsters let's take a look at their nature resistance negative positive zero so either one of those will actually be effective uh, let's look at their physical resistance uh, low and low, and this is pretty high, so have to be careful of that. So let's take a look at what our heroes are doing to figure out where we want to put our monsters and stuff. Barbarian, uh, weak to ice. They have a front physical damage that applies broken armor, which is pretty strong. 
And they have a skill that applies Enrage to all heroes at the start of each fight. Now, that means they're all going to do extra damage. So this guy is very dangerous. Lots of health. Not a whole lot of morale. So, a little bit, a little bit dangerous, this character. is going to buff everybody up. Here we have an Exile. This character has high air resistance. They deal air damage and apply tiredness to reduce damage. And they have a skill that gives 30% of one hero's maximum morale back after each fight once. So after each fight, it'll give one hero's some of their morale back. So it's going to be hard to kill people with morale while this character is in here. And we have an elf, which is apparently an adventuring class, not a <laughs> race of creatures. We have an AoE ice damage that applies elemental weakness. Not so horrible when this character does physical damage. This one only does air. But this one does ice. And then a skill heals 50% of one hero's maximum life after a fight once. This is a great time for them to use it because that means after this fight, this character will heal one of these ones pretty much back up to full. But we won't have hit them with the crossbow, with the ballista yet. So this is actually really good that she'll use that up before she, anybody gets hit with this. So that's going to be really good for us, actually. So we're going to be doing physical damage in the front. Air damage in the back. So we want air resistance in the back. This person's weak to air, so we don't want them in the back. And this person has good armor, so we'll put them in the front, even though he's going to get it sort of sundered away by the barbarian. So let's go next. We want to put our ballista down. Confirm. Next group. Uh, again, we have physical in the front. So we might do this character here, air in the back. Oh, they both have good air resistance, and then we don't have a choice here. We've got two of these same Headslinger char characters, Balko and Clerk, and Hibley. So some great names. So we'll confirm that. All right, she's ready. Okay, they took a little morale damage from the trap. This skill's going to enrage. Okay, so we've got our creepy little murderers here first. So we might use the butcher knives first to do the bleeding. <laughs> Ouch. That was a lot of damage. So we've got some fire damage. Add two stacks to the penalty with the most stacks. See if that increases bleeding. It does. So these two now have three stacks of bleeding. Getting stacks of a damage over time up is very important in this game because it does more damage than you'd think. It's not... It's five damage per stack, or five percent per stack, depending on the, the type. And then each time they take the damage, it goes down by one tick. So if they have one stack of poison, they're going to take 5 damage, and then it'll go away. If they have two stacks, they'll take 10 damage, and then next turn they'll take 5, and then next turn they'll take nothing. So if you can get something like poison or, or bleeding up to, say, 6, 7, 8 stacks, they're going to be taking, you know, 40 damage, then 35, then 30, then 25, and that can just kill heroes outright. And remember, as I explained in episode 0, they do take that damage as they progress through the dungeon, not necessarily when they're in combat either. So go to the trap room, they take their bleed and their morale and their fire and all that. Go to the spell room, they bleed, they burn, they take ice damage. Go to the next monster room, and it continues on. So you can load them up with damage over time early on, and it follows them the whole way until it runs out or it gets cleansed or something. So now we have our Steel Golem. We can use a Freezing Fist. This person is weak to that. Or we can use this to remove effects, but I don't want to take the, po the bleed off. I guess it's probably important to find out if that does work. So let's see if it works. It does. It took the bleed off, but that gave us more barrier points here. Barrier absorbs as many damage points as barrier points. So cool. So it's just a shield, which is kind of what I expected, but I hadn't actually played with this yet. Taking the bleed off of this guy wasn't so bad because he doesn't take as much physical damage because of his armor, but he also had an enrage, so I think it was overall much better that I got all of this shield and got rid of the enrage than that I lost the bleed. Plus, we're just going to give him some more bleed here anyway. Yeah. 
They're lowering their, their elemental resistances. Actually, all the resistances. He's down to... Uh, <laughs> he's down to negative 15% in armor and negative 55 nature. Oh boy. Not good. Let's go ahead and freezing fist this guy. Got some barrier points. Throw some more knives. This might kill me. Nope, he's still going. Alright, give another punch here. So she used her passive to heal. Now they're going to take pretty big damage here. Oh my god, I almost killed both of them. Oh, they bled to death. <laughs> and they lost their clothing. Alright, so we won. That was pretty easy actually. Um, got some blood. So here we can pick up a succubus. I love these monsters because they can uh, ricochet their attacks. Uh, if they have positive armor, it's like they, they heat up or or something like that and it like spreads. These units are cool. They do a lot of morale damage. Um, they're sort of like debuff un uh, support units for your groups. And Ghost does morale and air damage and morale on the back. Interesting, interesting. I think we'll grab the Ghost and we might try to put together a morale damage team. That'll be in one of the rooms, so we'll grab the ghost. And we've got motivation, so you can see these ones that lost fights, lost motivation. This one only lost one for some reason. Let's we'll check out why that is. And these ones lost two, and then these two that were in the garrison healed up their uh, motivation. So, let's take a look. Why did this person only lose one? I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. I have no idea. So we can go to a trainer, spend some gold to train your active monsters, buy a monster or a trap or have an event. Um, let's do... Let's see, we have a business trip coming up where we can do it, choose an employee to protect the sales department during a business trip. I think this is where you send a unit off away for a number of weeks, and then they come back and you get paid for lending your units out. So we have to make sure we have excess units so we have enough to send on the trip. And then here we'll have plunder where we can send units out to raid or another business trip. So we might want to actually hire a unit here so that we don't run out of units for this. So let's go to the merchant. What's this? Polar Portal. This is a trap. 10 ice damage. Applies frostbite. Applies one additional stack if the target's ice resistance is negative. Weird. Polar Portal. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. Doesn't fit super well with our character, but if I had the Enchantress, that'd be a neat idea. Aerobot. 60 damage in the front. Broken armor or air damage AOE attacks an additional time if a monster of the group has at least 50 barrier points goodness only 45 health another succubus but I want to try these new ones out so even though this character has low health I think I want to buy them and I don't I could buy a succubus as well I think we might do that okay so now we can do a business trip, which I think I want to do. So we can send... So you can see we get different rewards here. We can send our ghost off for eight weeks and get a bunch of gold and 20 blood. That's very good. That's pretty tempting. We can send this one off for an incredible 18 weeks for 75 gold, but a artifact, Horn of Plenty. Monsters have a 20% chance to deal a critical strike when attacking, plus 50% damage and morale. So one out of five attacks will do an extra 50% damage. That's tempting. Or we can send this character away for five weeks. They'll bring back 112 gold and they will gain two motivation. They don't need any, so it's, that's, this is probably not the one we're going to take. So we want the money or do we want the artifact? I'm tempted to go this way. 
You can have five artifacts, and I'm not sure I've ever actually filled those slots all the way up, so... Let's send this character, get the money right away. Oh, we get the artifact right away. Oh my god, awesome. So we can do plunder, send three volunteers, so it picks for me. So these three monsters here. I'm going to send them to the prolific gold mine. There's a high risk of injury uh, of one volunteer, which will put them out of commission for 10 weeks. But I would gain a, kind of a lot of gold. I can send them to the mushroom circle. The volunteers would gain motivation, which I don't need. I can send them to the necromancer's lair. They lose motivation, but I find a monster. I think we're going to go gold. Plunder. So this person was injured, so they need 10 weeks to heal. We gathered 185 gold. Pretty good for one, one person to be out of commission. 10 weeks of medical care. It's kind of a long time. And so then now we have a merchant or an event. We've got plenty of gold, so we could try to buy something else. Um, or we could do an event and see what else we get into trouble with. But we will take a look at that on the next episode because we are all out of time for this one. So I hope everybody's enjoying this, and I hope... This episode where we actually did a couple of dungeons made a lot more sense than the episode zero when I was just trying to explain it, but it's, it's harder to do without showing it. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. And if you guys are enjoying this series, uh, drop me a like if you want, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you on the next episode. And we will we'll do one of these two, and then we'll probably pick the veterans just because uh, we get more rewards and it's... Uh, it's more fun, so we'll, we'll see how we go when we get there. So thanks for joining, and I'll see you then.